So, um, Iran is the second largest economy in the Middle East after Saudi Arabia. What are the major strengths and uh, major weaknesses in this economy? Thank you for inviting me, Olga, to start with. But Iran is certainly a powerhouse, and everybody knows that. And uh, to me, Iran is a little bit the Germany of the area. It has 80 million inhabitants, yes. 80 million consumers or people. Uh, they are very willing to spend, the consumers. Uh, Iran has excellent engineering, has excellent medical doctors, excellent medical care. So far for the strengths of the overall picture, uh, education is very good. Management, we believe, is certainly something where there is op an opportunity to upgrade the middle management. So for companies coming to Iran, this is something they have to keep in mind. Apart from oil industry, what are the other well-developed industries in Iran? As you say, oil services is certainly something on sanction permitting, which is very interesting. Uh, the healthcare industry, we very much like construction and tourism. Mm -hmm. We basically like tourism, which brings construction that way around. We like the mobile phone space in a country where you have about 110 million SIM cards. Uh, probably have a penetration rate of a factor of 1.5 SIM cards per people, per person. Um, education, we believe there's a, another good opportunity. Yes, Iran, Iranians very much like their food and have an excellent cuisine. So for companies like the big companies on the market who are already there, uh, it's a great opportunity. It's a consumer company. Packaging, food definitely and fast moving consumer goods as well. Uh, so, are they self-sufficient in the food industry or they import a lot of their food? They import uh, products, but uh, more because they like the brand or the label. Iran is, is self-sufficient to a high degree in, in basic foods, maybe not in staples, they import a lot of rice also mm -hmm. and wheat, but uh, in the high end they are of course not sufficient because of the sanctions. So on the technology side, they're not sufficient. There is a purpose behind that. What are their favorite uh, agricultural commodities and what are their favorite agricultural products? Uh, you have, it's a big saffron producer, so small quantities but high, high value, mm -hmm. dried fruit, nuts. Rice, wheat, no? Yes, but they are more they are importers of that. So they, they, are part, uh, they produce it locally, but they import on top of it. So you've been investing uh, for quite some time in Iran. Yeah. Uh, why uh, you decided to start investing in Iran uh, and are you happy with your investments? Well, it's an opportunity that came along and we picked the opportunity in 2008, 2009 to look at the wind energy market which was offered to us as an opportunity, a market we are familiar with. So we created a Iranian Swiss startup group who uh, organized licensing, but it wasn't awfully complicated either, it was just very time consuming and cumbersome because you don't speak the language, you have to get used to a different system, you have the sanction issues, so there's a lot of fear from many people, there's some companies don't want to talk to you, so you have to design an industrial strategy, an import strategy, a lot of stuff to be done, but four years later uh, we, we were done, then there was a change in government, which we are very happy about, that's why we stay. And uh, not only do we stay, we decided to help other companies to do what we did today, and uh, we have absolutely no reason to leave. We think it's a wonderful early move or advantage. You're saying other companies, other a lot of companies uh, from the West uh, and maybe from the East uh, in Iran already, despite of sanctions. I mean, uh, uh, the East, mainly China, maybe a bit of Indonesia or Malaysia, but definitely China picked up a lot of the trade that got lost due to sanctions from the West. But the Chinese, probably from the Iranian point of view, 
uh, there is a saturation of Chinese presence in products. And the Chinese, uh, the uh, Iranians always look to the West. There are two cultures that are very much like, the German one and the American one. But the, but the Iranians also like Italian products, very much so, Italian machinery, look at tiles or others like French products. So they would be very happy to buy again and build up the strength again with the Western countries they used to trade one and a half generations ago. So you, uh, if the sanctions are lifted, let's say, tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, do you foresee a large trade uh, between um, Europe uh, or America or China uh, going uh, between Iran, starting uh, between Iran and those countries? Uh, Iran has a lot to offer, as we said, 80 million consumers, has a lot of gas and oil, so it has a lot of, to offer to import and a lot to export. So it's an interesting trade partner for many is born in sanction. So right, if I take yes. the example of XGDR, uh, is Germany, all this Germany, they, they have lived in a style of economic environment which they need to get used to, to international competition. And in an economy that is to a majority state owned, uh, this is not a natural competition. So there might be a wave of opportunities coming, but it will also come with a wave of complications. So you will have early adopters, if we take the mobile phone industry, you have people who will queue to get the next uh, modern mobile phone and others take the third generation of the same device, same thing in Iran. We think we were all the movers because we see an opportunity and we had the patience to wait. Yes. Big banks will probably come last because there's a lot of legal uncertainty surrounding the sanctions. So, and as long as the banking situation is not clarified, there will not be a big boom possible because you simply cannot pay for the trade. So it will be individual businesses, but there will be growth, of course. Uh, right now, the uh, Iranian government uh, has to fight high unemployment, uh, especially young women and uh, young specialists. Uh, what are they doing to attract foreign investments uh, to create jobs uh, in to create uh, lower unemployment? Uh, unemployed young people leaving university, I don't know the statistics between male and female, but uh, the, the, the women are very well integrated in at least what we see in the daily workforce. The FDI, foreign direct investment companies coming here are of course great news and helping. That's why we come back to education. The Iranians need to adjust to international companies who come here. So hopefully this will create a boost as well.